Hello everyone and welcome to SE Geek, the internet's most passionate software engineering show. I am your host, the Software Engineering Geek, and today we're going to talk about metaprogramming. So metaprogramming is a very powerful idea that's uh, built into Groovy and some other programming languages as well. So we're going to talk about that today. It's one of the things that actually makes Groovy very interesting. I know I've gone over a lot of the other powers of Groovy, like closures and stuff like that. But this is one that actually, you know, ha gives you a lot of power. Now, before I get started, there are a couple of talks, which I will link up by Jeff Scott Brown talking about metaprogramming. And there are actually two different types of metaprogramming. There's runtime and there's compile time metaprogramming. For the sake of this video, we're going to be focusing on runtime metaprogramming. Um, it's a lot easier to get into and wrap your head around. The compile time gets a little bit deeper and a little bit more complex, but this will be in there if you decide to go and look at it. Um, and I probably will do a video on this in the future. So something else uh, to mention is I'm going to be going over uh, just a small little bit of what is pro metaprogramming. So there's a lot of things that I'm not going to be going over like traits which is a brand new thing that just got added to uh, Groovy because I don't know how to use it yet. So uh, going to Spring12GX so I might learn that there or I might just read the documentation. But one of the things is I also will link up this, which is uh, the section on metaprogramming, which I talked about uh, this documentation in the update video and mentioned they're filling a lot of this in, so a lot of things are to be determined. Um, but one of the things that I will be talking about, which is in here somewhere, is expando, class, expando meta classes. So that's something I will be actually coming back to. Um, another thing, just to, to talk about the AST transforms or the compile time metaprogramming, there's a bunch of these actually built into the language that you can just take advantage of. And these, uh, I've, I've talked about a few of these just in general, I think, in other videos. Um, if not, I'll probably make a video talking about just the usage of these because these, you know, you don't have to actually build them. Someone else built them for you, you can, and you can just use them. So let's get into some code. So metaprogramming allows you to manipulate a program uh, at runtime with runtime uh, metaprogramming or compiled or at compile time with the compile time metaprogramming. So I have just this uh, little test class, and you know, if I run this, I create an instance, call you know function, we get the function is called. Big deal. So let's do a little bit of metaprogramming. What can we do with this? One thing we can do is we can call a function dynamically. So I have some string here. You know, and I called it, you know, there's the text function, and I'm using a groovy string here and injecting that. Uh, another way is I'm just using a plain string. So if I run this, I should get the function called three times. It can be useful in some respect, I'm sure, uh, but, you know, obviously, if you're using something like this in your programs, be careful that you're not taking user input because then you create a vector for uh, injection. So just something to keep aware of. So what else can we do? Well, I mentioned the idea of expandos. So there's this class in Groovy called expando. And what it allows you to do is just add uh, functions to it. So I you know, take the instance of my expando. Um, I take the, f I call, uh, do dot function equals give it a closure, and now it has that function. So if I run this, you'll see that the expando function gets called. So this makes uh, things very dynamic and allows you to do things, you know, add functionality at runtime, which can be very powerful. There are trade-offs to be aware of 
uh, like uh, performance stuff if you do too much metaprogramming. But if you keep it light, it's, uh, it can just be something that's you know makes your uh, code a lot more fluent depending on how you use it. Or it can also be used uh, in the scope of uh, unit testing to mock out a function. Grails, uh, in particular, which is a web framework, which I'm I'll talk about in future videos, uh, they actually have something called Mock4, which it actually uses Expandos underneath it, which their mock thing is a little bit more complicated. Um, you know, it has some extra functionality which you may or may not use depending on what you're doing. So, but I, I do like meta, the uh, expando. So another thing to be aware of is that fact that pretty much all groovy classes are kind of expandos because they have this meta class. So you can uh, take my instance of, you know, this little test class and I can call it meta class add the function in here and if I run that you'll see function called twice because now it's calling it off of this one and that instance so another thing that uh, you can do uh, I showed this before in I think I've showed it in another video uh, but if you're not aware of it if you add a method that is prefixed with get you can actually treat when you this when you call it like property access. So I'm taking the instance t, it's meta class, adding the function get state, and you know this is just going to print line the state is good. So if I do the instance dot state, notice no parens. So I'm actually doing property access here. When I run this, I'll get the state is good. So that's one th one cool little thing to keep in mind. It actually, uh, this is kind of part of uh, you know where metaprogram is actually baked into the language. So getters and setters, when you do those methods, or if you just have uh, like properties, the getters and setters are actually implicit and they will get called, uh, you know, automatically. That's something that's kind of baked into the metaprogramming of the language itself. So all that's well and good, but let's have a do a little bit more of an interesting example here. So one thing I didn't mention is that you can uh, do meta classes on either the class itself or an instance of the class. If you do it on just an instance, then it's only valid for that instance. But if you do it on a class level, it's valid for the whole entire class anytime you use it. Now, one, one thing to note, I've been using equals, which will overwrite any method that's there. Uh, if you use this arrow arrow, uh, it'll add it to it or you know throw an exception if there's a method already there. So I'm just gonna comment that out. Now, I'm using this annotation here, which uh, actually just serves as uh, bringing in some external library, which this is an Apache Commons uh, codec library. And actually, this is an AST transform, so at grab, you know, does some actual functionality. It'll actually, you know, it, you know, does this at compile time. And obviously, just an import here. And what I'm doing here is I'm taking the string class and I'm adding this SHA-1 method. So, you know, if you ever had like a string class and you wanted to, you know, say, get the SHA-1 of it or encrypt it, you know, it's a very common request on string, uh, you know, on strings in general. But now you can just do it It's as if it was baked into the class itself. So uh, what I have here is I have this just for comparison and I have this here just to, you know, test it out and this actually just shows it equaling it. So if I run this, I see, you know, I get the SHA-1 of that string, uh, which is this one, which is the SHA-1 of test. Then if I take the string and do dot SHA-1, like it's just baked in, I get you see the same one, and here's it just uh, in a side by side format. So 
this is a very powerful thing. Um, it allows you to do a lot of interesting things that you couldn't do otherwise with programs. Uh, because, like, say you have a class, you can't extend it. Um, now you can. You can do things around it that you couldn't do before. You can test things that a lot easier because you can mock out a method or, st you know, stuff like that. So, very powerful concept. And if you think you'll never use it, um, once you get into grooving grails, you will. I would say as you get more experienced... And, uh, but you won't, you shouldn't go crazy with it like anything else. It's a tool and, you know, it has both, uh, positive and negative effects. Obviously on performance, it can have a negative effect if you go too crazy with what you're doing in metaprogramming. But, you know, simply adding a little method won't, you know, detra won't detract from your overall performance in any, you know, realistic scenario. So that's pretty much all I have for this episode, so I'll uh, talk to you next time.